Hello and welcome to the 54th video in this series for Beginners Programming in C. So before I start this video, um, if this video ends up a little bit rough, I apologise, but believe it or not, I've now been trying to do this video for three and a quarter hours, and each time I've done it, either something has gone wrong with the software, the telephone has rung, or I've made a stupid mistake, and I'm starting to rapidly lose my patience and motivation for doing all this, because... Uh, it gets very irritating when it starts taking half a day when I should be um, at work, working, um, rather than doing these videos. So hopefully this one is okay. And like I said, if I make an error or something like that, then I'm just going to bulldoze through it and carry on because I've totally lost patience. Right, so in the last video we looked at doubly linked lists, um, where we had we had the next and the previous pointers then added into our racing car structure, which you remember was basically just a a sort of simulated queue of cars. And what we're going to do in this video and the next few videos is look at adding cars to the end and the beginning of the list and also inserting and removing cars from the list. To do that, we need, need to make a couple of changes to the code. The first one is here. In this add car function, we're going to change the name of this now to make new car, like so. And this is simply going to return a newly made car. That means we don't need the pointer reference to the previous car now and we have this entering the name and speed and storing the variables we don't need this either because we're not doing anything with its previous car or its next or anything like that we're simply creating allocating the memory and returning a pointer to that memory to our car now down inside main let's inside the add here just delete all of the code inside there and I'm going to call this add start now and don't forget to change this here now to what have we got here eight letters here one two three four five six seven eight and I'm just going to copy this again and we're going to call it add end like so and obviously change this now to a six and that's what we're going to do in this video is make these functions for adding to the start and the end we don't need this newest pointer either and we're going to do in these upcoming videos all of our insertion and deletion using the reference that points to the car at the start of the list. Now to do this most efficiently you would also have a pointer to the end of the list as well but we're simply going to take our start pointer and iterate through the list because we don't have any more than a few cars ever at one time in our list but please bear in mind that normally with a huge list you would also probably have a pointer to the end of the list as well. So without further ado let's get on with the add new car function. So I'll make a little bit of space there and we'll call this function add to start and it's going to return a pointer to our car that's now at the start of the list. So I'll call this, sorry, add to start and it takes as an argument a pointer to the current car that's at the start of the list. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll make a new car so we'll call it new car and now we can just ma call our make new car function like so and that's now allocated in the memory for us a new car and we've got a pointer to that place in the memory now the only thing we're adding to the start of this we might be adding of course the first car in the list so we have to say that if our start pointer is equal to null it means we didn't actually have a car at all on the list to start with. Sorry, if it's not equal to null, then it means we did have a car to start with. I got completely mixed up there. And if so, then we need to insert our car before this start pointer. So what we need to say then is that our start pointer's previous car is now our new car. So the start pointer is no longer at the start of the list. It has something behind it. And that also means, of course, then that our new car's next is what's pointed to by our start pointer. And that means we'll return from this function whether or not we had a car on the list. We return then our new car as the new pointer to the start of our list. So if I just go down into main, and now I'll say that our start pointer is now going to be equal to add to start taking in where our start pointer is currently pointing this means this will then be pointing after the functions finished to the new car 
So I'll just uh, bring up the console here and compile this program for the hundredth time today. And now I'll run the program. There must be a run statement here somewhere. There is. And now let's put add start in. So we'll enter the name and speed, Ford 100, and now I'll print, and you can see that we have our Ford on the list alone with nothing ahead and nothing behind. Let's add start again, and now let's add Audi with 200, and now print the list, and now you can see is that the Audi is now at the start of the list, knowing the Ford's ahead, and the Ford knows that it's got an Audi behind it. And for completeness, let's add one more, and let's just put Merck with a speed of 300 and print the list. And now you can see the Merc is at the start of the list, knowing the Audi's ahead. The Audi has the Ford ahead, the Merc behind, and the Ford has the Audi behind and ahead nothing. So that then is the insertion of something at the start of the list. Well, now let's have a look at putting something on the end of the list. And like I said, we're going to do this using the start pointer. So the way we're going to do this is, the first thing we're going to say is, just like we did for the Add to Start, do we actually have anything on the list at all? If not, then return this pointer as our newly made car. Otherwise, we're going to iterate through the list until we get to the last car. And we know that what the last car on the list is because that will be the car whose next pointer is pointing to nothing because there's nothing in front of it on the list. So I'll just make a little bit of space here and racing car and now put add to end. And again, we want to take in a reference to our start pointer here, like so. I'll just scroll down. OK, so what we're going to do is, remember we're returning a reference to the first car on the list. Well, we're going to make that reference now, and I'm going to call it a return pointer. Now, you could do inside these functions things with a few less pointer definitions than I'm doing, but I'd like to keep it as clear as possible. So this at the moment will be referencing our start pointer. So return pointer at the start is function is pointing to the first car on our list. And the next thing we need is we need our new car, except at the moment we're not going to do anything with that new car. Okay, so first thing we'll say is do we actually have anything on the list? So just like we did in the add to start, we'll say if the start pointer, except this time we'll say if it's equal to null, that means we don't have anything at all on our list, which means we actually need to add a new car. And the way we're going to do this is say new car is equal to add to start, like so. And we'll take the reference to our start pointer. It doesn't matter what it is because it's null. But this is now creating, using the add to start function, a new car here. So we're effectively saying, OK, there was nothing on the list to start with. We're adding to start. And that's our new car. And we'll set then our return pointer of the point we want to return as the car at the start of the list now, obviously, to our new car. Otherwise, we need to find the last car on the list. So we'll make another pointer and we'll call this the index car. And that at the moment is set equal to the first car on the list because we know that we have at least one car on the list and we need to find the car on the list that doesn't have anything pointed to by its next car pointer. So the way we do that is we can say that while index car and its next is not equal to null, so imagine that we only had one car, well this while loop wouldn't execute because index car would index car's next would already be null, then we need to set index car to point to whatever's pointed to by its current next, like so. So simply move it along to the next car. And this will keep going until the next is null. And when it is, we know that the index car is now pointing at the last car in the list. So now we've done that, we can make our new car. So we'll simply say our new car is equal to make new car, like so. And now we can say that the in index car's next is now the new car. So we're putting the new car now at the end of the list. And just for completeness, we'll set the new car's next now equal to null, even though it should be already. And now the new car's previous needs to be set to the index car, like so. 
And now all we need to do is, once we've set all this up in the way, so we've put the new car on the end of the list, we need then to return our return pointer, which is pointing to the start of the list, like so. Of course, in this section, we didn't need to do anything with the return pointer. It was only in this section. So now that we've done that, we can go down into here, and now we can say that our start is equal to add to end, taking in again our start and save. And now I'll just bring over the terminal and type clear. And hopefully this will compile and it didn't. What have I done here? I've put a colon in on line 80. Hang on a minute. I told you I'm not deleting any errors, unfortunately, in this one because I'm a little bit thin on patience. OK, good. So now we can run the program. And now let's Let's add end straight away and see what happens. So forward and 100, and now if I print, you can see that we have one car on the list, and it's a Ford Speed 100, ahead none, behind none. Let's add start, and let's add an Audi with 200, and print the list, and we have the Audi at the start. And now let's add end, and add the Merc with a speed of 300. Oops. 300, sorry. And now let's print. And that went all a little bit wrong because I didn't obey my own commands. One moment, I'll just quit out the program and start that again. Sorry about that. So, run again, because I got the commands wrong. So, let's add end just to trick it again. So, forward and 100, and print. And now let's, let's add end again, this time with an enter, and add the Merc with a 300, and print. And now you can see that the Merc has actually gone on to the end. So, if I... Now go with add start and uh, Audi and 200. We should get the Audi now on the start of the list, and we have with the 200. And let's add a Ferrari to the end with a speed of 400, let's say, and print the list. And now you can see we have the Ferrari on the end of the list, the Mercedes behind. So you can see that in this video we've managed then to, in our doubly linked list, actually, whoops, quit we've actually managed to write the functions that add cars to the start and the end of our list. And like I said, a more efficient way of doing this would be also to have a pointer to the end, which would be returned by our add to end function. Okay, so I hope that video has made some sense. I'm sorry about the couple of errors in there, but like I said, I've spent a long, long time trying to get this video complete. And in the next video, we'll look at actually inserting a car somewhere into the middle of the list. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.